A while ago I made this video and many seemed to like it and I wasn't able to cover all my Vim tricks and tips on my list and I learned many new ones from you guys in the comment section. So here's a part 2 to that video. Before I forget it, a guy with a Lamborghini told me in a YouTube video that I should create open loops in my videos to increase watch time. So I guess I should tell you that I'm gonna leave the best tip to the end or whatever. But honestly they're all awesome because Vim is awesome. But maybe I'm gonna make the last one just a little bit more special to get me closer to that Lamborghini. Let's say you have a number here and you just want to increment it by one. What I used to do is something like CIW to change the word and put me in insert mode and then I would type out the new number. But actually Vim provides a much better built-in way to do this. We can simply hit Ctrl X to decrement and Ctrl A to increment. Also we can take this a step further. Let's say we want to create a numbered list. In this case I can do something like 10 0 dot. This will give me a 0 dot 10 times once per each line. And then I can do something like VIP to select the paragraph in visual mode. And now if I do G, control A, then each number will get incremented by the line number inside the visual selection. Does that make any sense? So for example, the first number gets incremented by one, the second by two and so on. What a neat way to create a numbered list. The next tip I learned from someone in the comments and it has really improved my ergonomics. Let's say we want to create a bunch of new lines. What I used to do is hit O and then spam enter. But reaching for the enter key using the pinky can be a bit painful if you do it too much. So the better way to do this is O to enter insert mode and then using Control J we can also spam enter from insert mode but this time we can use the index finger which is much more comfortable to do that. The next tip is also along the lines of ergonomics. Let's say we have a few words here. And if I now realize I made a mistake, instead of deleting the last word character by character, I can simply stay in insert mode and with Control w I can remove the entire last word and I can keep doing that. For the next tip we can stay in insert mode because did you know that you can actually run commands in normal mode from insert mode? Let me show you. Let's say we want to get rid of this line. If we just want to delete it but stay in insert mode to keep typing, then what we can do is Control o this will put us in normal mode, but just for the next command. Then we can run the command in normal mode, let's say dd, and this deleted the line, but it also put us right back into insert mode. How neat is that? For the next one, let's open some code. I have a Python project here. What it's about doesn't really matter, but let's say we have here in line 19 the word message. And I guess if you're an active Vim user, you probably know that with the asterisk symbol, you can search for occurrences of the word under the cursor and cycle through them with the N and with capital N, you can go backwards. A lot of times we don't just want to find exact matches of the words. Sometimes we also want to find partial matches. Here we have the word message as a standalone word, but sometimes we also have it appearing in some function names. So how can we navigate there? If we want to find partial matches as well, then we can do g asterisk and cycle through partial matches in the same way. Similarly, if we want to search in the backwards direction, we can do g pound sign and go backwards like this. The next tip also helps us navigate and jump around our code faster. For example, let's jump to the top of the file, jump to the bottom of the file, maybe then jump to the top of the window, then jump to the middle and back to the bottom again. All of these jumps are recorded in what is called as a jump list. We can see the jump list with the jumps command. This now shows us the different locations where we last jumped and this even works across files. So let's hit enter to exit out of this and if we press Control o we can go back in the jump list and with Control i we can go forwards in the jump list. An important detail to note here is what qualifies as a jump. For example if I just go up 10 lines with 10k and I check the jump list then you won't see this being recorded here. And this is because 10k doesn't qualify as a jump. To see what qualifies as a jump, let's open the documentation for the jump list. And in here, we have a list of the commands that count as a jump and that get recorded in the jump list. So just keep this small detail in mind when you're using this feature because otherwise it can seem a bit counterintuitive. 
Another really underrated feature, in my opinion, is Vim Marks. Now, if you've been using Vim for a while, you're probably familiar with Marks. However, there are some details that many people overlook. Let me show you what I mean. Let's close this split and let me quickly touch on what Marks are in general. For example, if we want to, let's say, bookmark, this particular line that we're in so that we can later jump to it more easily. Then what we can do is MA. Now, if we pull up the marks using the marks command, you can see that this particular line is now inside of the A mark. Now let's jump somewhere else to the top of the file, for example. And now with single quote A, we can jump back to our mark. So this is how marks work in general. You type M and then another letter, and this is kind of like the bookmark that later you can jump to. Now, lowercase marks are localized to the particular file that you're in. But let's say we want to jump across files. So let's open up another file and let me mark this line here. Then we can use a capital letter, let's say M capital A, jump back to our previous file, go somewhere else, and then with single quote, capital A, we jump back to the location that we marked in the other file. Now, this is super useful and all, but what I didn't know before is that there are some special marks built into Vim. For example, let's jump back to the top of the file, and if we jump back to our previous location, we can of course do that because we marked it, but also let's say we didn't mark it, then we can just do quote quote, and this will jump back to the previous jump location. Similarly, if we go in and edit a line, let's say we make some changes here, and then we jump to a different location, like the bottom of the file, we can jump back to the last edited location with quote dot. Actually, in this case, there's another special mark that would also take us to the same location. So let's go back to the top of the file and we can jump back to the last location where we last left insert mode with quote followed by the caret symbol. And if we make a longer edit across multiple lines, then we can use the quote opening brace to jump to the beginning of the last change or yank actually. And quote closing brace to jump to the last line of the last edit. Sometimes I get bored of my color theme, but I don't want to go through the hassle of configuring a different one. But the good thing is that there are a few built-in ones in Vim and they're not all terrible. My personal favorite built-in color theme is called Murphy. Here's how to set it up. We can change to the built-in color themes with the color scheme command or just colo for short. And then my personal favorite one is called Murphy. Now this might not be for everyone, but I think it looks pretty cool and I like to spice things up from time to time, if you know what I mean. The following Vim tip completely blew my mind when I first saw it. If you're an active Vim user, you probably know that Vim has multiple clipboards called registers. We can see those clipboards, let me first undo this, with the register command. Now here we see the contents of the different registers. For example, the zero register contains ASDF, blah, blah, blah. The one register contains ASDF, blah, 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 something else. Now let's make a few deletions in our code and observe what happens. So if I delete some of the imports here, and then I'm gonna delete this class and the static method, and now let's pull up registers again, then you can see that the deletions are automatically stored in the numbered registers from zero to nine. And if you've been using Vim for any amount of time, you're probably familiar with the dot key. The dot key simply repeats the last executed motion. But when it comes to these numbered registers, the dot key has a special behavior. If the change that the dot command is repeating is referencing a numbered register, it will automatically increment the reference to the register after execution. It's a little tricky to explain, so I'm gonna try to demonstrate it. Let's close this register split and create some empty lines here. Now let's paste the content of the first numbered register with double quote one P. Now if I undo this change with U and I repeat the last change with a dot, then actually I don't get the static method back. Actually I get the second last deletion that I made because the reference to the register has been incremented. And like this I can cycle through my deletions. So if I undo with U and repeat with dot, then I get the third last deletion and I can continue cycling through my previous deletions just like that. How awesome is that? Why is this useful? Well, if you accidentally deleted something, you can just repeat these steps and cycle through your deletions until you get the text that you're looking for. 
Okay, now let me quickly undo the random changes that we just made. Now let's move on to the last tip I have for you today. Did you know that Vim has a native way to refactor across files? Let me show you what I mean. Let's say we have this Olama chat client object and we want to rename it to simply Olama client across the entire code base. To do this, we can make use of a feature called vimgrab. We can run vimgrab with the vimgrab command or just vim for short and then we can enter a regex pattern. So in this case, let's say Olama chat client. And now we need to enter a directory where vimgrab should look for this string. In this case, I want to look through the entire working directory, including subdirectories. If I just want to search for the current working directory and not its subdirectories, then I would put an asterisk. And if I want to do a recursive search, so including all the subdirectories, then I need to put two of them. So let's run this. And now we can see that vimgrep has found three occurrences in our code base. To navigate through those, let's open a quick fix list with copen. Now this quick fix list shows us where vimgrep has found occurrences of our olama chat client string. We can navigate through the items of this list simply by going into the split and then selecting with J and K the item and then pressing enter to go there. A slightly more efficient way to do this would be with command CP to go to the previous item and command CN to go to the next item. But what is really powerful is that we can apply a command to each item in the quick fix list. For this, there's another C command, which is C do, and then it takes a regex. So in this case, Olama chat client, and we want to replace it with Olama client. And we want to do this globally, and I want to confirm each time. So let's execute this and see what happens. All right, now this brings me to the first item in the quick fix list and it asks me, do you want to replace with Olama client? And then I can use Y to confirm or N to decline. So let's hit Y, Y and Y. And just like that, we have refactored this class name throughout the entire code base, no LSP needed. All right, that's all I have for you today. I hope this was useful. Let me know down in the comments what I missed. And if you are enjoying this kind of content, I would appreciate a like and subscribe for more Vim stuff and CLI tools. Cheers!